Welcome back to the channel everyone. This here is a 1997 Honda Foreman 400 four-wheel drive and uh, I recently picked it up for a pretty good deal. Um, actually it was a steal but uh, it doesn't run but the engine drivetrain and everything is good on it. So I think what's going on here is bring it around this side. This is the, the carburetor and if you look the fuel line going to it has had the fuel filter uh, completely taken out and just a straight line. So I'm willing to bet that there's a lot of debris in that carburetor. So the first thing we're going to probably do is to dig into this carburetor. Um, also needs a battery. For now I've just got that one hooked up. Uh, but I did order a battery so we're going to go ahead and put that in when it gets here. The other thing I ordered is a full tune-up kit, which includes oil, uh, spark plug, and uh, filters, air filter and oil filter. So we're going to go ahead and do all that too. It does have uh, fairly new tires on it, hardly anywhere at all. So another thing I noticed is that it's missing a lot of these um, clips that go in. And uh, so I think what I'm going to do is just replace it with bolts. You can see how loose that one is. I'm just going to go ahead and put some uh, probably stainless bolts in there um, and, and some of these like that, maybe a, a fender washer or so. And uh, it's kind of cracked up. You can see this is cracked all over the place. It's like that on the other side too. Um, I did look up these fenders. You can get a full set all the way around the black pieces there uh, for about $50 on eBay. So that may be an option to go ahead and do that. The taillights work. And you got three lights on the front. That one works. Uh, I believe one of these, the low beam, is burned out on the bottom here. Um, so we'll probably end up getting new headlights for it. On this carburetor, I want to go back to this for a second. There is some weird stuff going on here. Uh, I kind of got an idea of what, how these lines need to be run. I know that one has to go into there uh, but there on some of the pictures I've seen there was a T that teed off and I, I I'm not sure where else it goes so I'm gonna have to kind of dig into that and see so anyways let's get the tank off and get that carburetor off and we're gonna go ahead and open this up see what it looks like and I'm gonna replace all this fuel line and put a new fuel filter on all right so I got it over here on the bench and I popped this off and you can see down in there, there was quite a bit of crud in there. So I'm going to have to scrape at that a little bit and clean that out. And uh, when I took that off, this thing fell out. So i got to figure out where that goes and how it goes in. I think it goes like that, but I'm not sure. So uh, we'll worry about that later. But uh, we're going to see if... If the jets are plugged up at all let me go grab my torch tip cleaners and i'll be right back all right i got my torch tip cleaners if you guys don't know this is a very good way to clean jets out uh, because you got so many different sizes here and uh, you just pick one because all different jets are different sizes so there we go that looks like it fits Well, let me pull that one out here. Felt like I just pushed something through, and I don't like that. Go grab the proper tool. There we go. There's something in there. Oh, okay. It was just the little needle in there. I must have hit it. This actually doesn't look too bad you can take some light and shine through them holes there are a couple of them that are blocked there though okay, a little bit smaller there we go so we want to make sure all those are clean go a 
I knew there was another one here. So that was definitely not helping us at all. I think that's it. Go ahead. Spray some of this down in there and see if it fans out. Oh yeah, we're good there. Okay, that's clean. So I will go ahead and put that one back in. I am going to pull that one out, might as well. I'm not so sure that this was even getting gas into the bowl here. Okay. Gotta be careful with these because they're brass and you can easily strip them out. There we go. It actually came out fairly easy. There it is. And we'll do the same thing to this. This one actually looks pretty good. And uh, get a big one and we'll make sure the main port here is clean too. A little too big. Yeah. Try this one. One of these are going to fit. All right, that one, that one fit. Let's give it a good spray. Do the same little test here. Looks good to me. And we will install it. Okay. What else do we have here? I want to pull this out and look at the needle and seat. They don't look too bad. Go ahead and uh, spray a little bit down in here. It's a spray in here, it should come out there. Yep, good deal. So that's clear. Now we just want to make sure that these are all cleaned up, we don't want any dirt on them. Shake the bowl because when these bowls go bad, you'll have gasoline inside of them, they won't work and they'll flood. So that's how you know if you have a good or bad float. Shake it, and you'll hear gasoline inside. So I'm going to leave this out for a second because there's a lot of crud down in here too. So I'm going to clean that out really quick and be right back. All right, so that's better. We can go ahead and put that back in. Just want to make sure it's all cleaned up. I don't want to put any more debris in there. Okay. All right, I think, I think that this is probably ready to go back together. So everything in here is clean now. We, we know there was a problem and uh, let's go ahead and put it back together. All right, let's go put it back on. All right, so I did forget to put in that little plastic piece, uh, but I, I got it put on there, so I think we're good. Um, this piece here, the threads were broke off, 
and it goes into this and so I super glued that back on I hope it holds we're gonna find out go ahead and put this on this is a throttle cable okay and we can put this cover back on grab me a wrench and I want to I want to tighten that up I think that's probably a 10 millimeter okay there we go and I was correct now this here just has a clamp on it you get it at it from under here there it is you can just tighten that right down onto that boot. Now, I'm going to put this right in here. So I think that's probably how it goes. Let's see if I can screw this into the carburetor without breaking it again. Pull this off for a second. Okay, I got it on. That was kind of a pain in the butt, but it's on. So, uh, that leaves me with the fuel line. We got to put a new fuel line on, put the fuel tank back in, and we're ready to try to start. All right, let's start putting some gas in it. Last time I did this, it all ran out. So hopefully this time, it'll all stay in. I did put a new uh, fuel filter here. Everything's looking good. So, so that's a good sign. I don't see any any leaking. It must have been the hose that was leaking. Let's go ahead and turn this on. We'll put it on reservation. That should be enough to get us some fuel into the carburetor. Okay. Are we ready? I think we're as ready as we're going to be. Holy crap. It tried. Just for a split second. Okay, so what's going on here? Why won't it start? I feel like gas isn't getting to the carb. There we go. Yeah. All right, that's a great sign. Will it actually still running? Oh, it sounds great. Might have turned that idle up though. Okay, we got a hose that's bad down here. Okay. 
I don't like that popping. Not sure what this goes to. guys it's a couple days later and uh, this thing drove me absolutely crazy um, I ended up having to take the carburetor back off go through it again and it had a little bit of uh, garbage in it that I was able to clean out again um, I also um, had got this stuff in so I got the entire tune-up kit we're gonna go ahead and take care of that but I want to show you how easy this starts now i don't have the battery yet but it's supposedly on its way here today so let me get you set up on a stand and we'll go ahead and try to start it all right so we're gonna go ahead and pull start it and i'll show you this thing starts so easy that's it uh one thing that drove me crazy about this is i would get it running and it would run for about 10 minutes and it would act like when it got hot that it would die and it didn't want to start for about five minutes after that almost like it would have to cool down but it didn't act like it was an ignition coil you know it wouldn't just die it just wouldn't have any throttle left so you couldn't throttle it up and try to go anywhere so that told me it was fuel well i got looking at it and the gas cap, I tried to blow through the hose and it wasn't breathing. So I think what was happening is the gas tank was drawing a vacuum and it was not allowed, it wasn't able to get fuel into the carburetor anymore. So it would just use up what's in the carb and then not be able to refill it. Because what I did was I loosened this cap up and once I loosened it up, I drove it around for a half hour straight. So that took care of that problem. I took the cap apart and blew everything out so it should be good now. And uh, so let's, uh, I, oh, one more thing I did is I went ahead and I put uh, bolts in all these uh, that were missing them. So this, all these fenders are tight now. Um, did the same thing over here. I mean, this was pretty loose. Now everything's all tightened together. Same thing here. So let's go ahead and get going on this tune-up. Okay, so the plug under here is a 17 millimeter. I got it loose, so let's go ahead and undo it and drain this oil out. There we go. All right, that oil's draining. Now let that go i'll move this over because right here is the oil filter so i'm going to go ahead and take that off and it'll probably drip down too oh yeah there it goes you can see it dripping Nice. That worked out very well. So I'll let that drain and we'll come back and put a filter in. Okay, so one thing I'm going to do is for this drain bolt, uh, it came with an extra washer. This is the old one. Might be hard to see because of the sun, but uh, got a new one here. So we're going to put that on. Might as well since it came with a new one and we'll go ahead and put it back in. Now, let's see what this oil filter looks like. It's 
pretty uh, crunchy. I'd say it hasn't been done in a while. So I'll just throw it in the oil for now. Lots of oil coming out all of a sudden. But there is a spring in there and you wanna make sure that stays in there or it's in there when you put the filter back together. So let me grab that filter. Here it is. These are all genuine Honda parts. There's a part number for you. <clears throat> and I believe it goes this way. Get this put on. All right, so I want to say that this takes 2.1 quarts. So what I'm going to do is put two quarts in, start it and let it run, and then uh, we'll check it again and top it off. So we're on the other side of the quad obviously now and we're gonna put oil in where the dipstick is. The oil for this is a 10W40 motorcycle oil. Um, this is straight from the Honda dealer, the GN4 oil. So I like to try to stay with uh, what the manufacturer recommends. They design this stuff for a reason the way they do. So it only makes sense to me to stick with the way they design it most of the time. Obviously there are times where uh, they mess up, but more times than not with Honda, you know, they'll run on just about anything you put in them, but if you want to get any kind of longevity out of any piece of equipment you have, it's a smart idea, especially transmission fluid in cars. That is a big one. You don't want to go with aftermarket if you can avoid it. That's my opinion on it. You do what you want. But uh, with transmission fluids, you get lots of different types of detergents. And if you run a factory type oil for the first, you know, 100,000 miles or whatever, and then you change it up, you're getting different detergents inside your transmission. And I believe that it probably uh, does more harm than if you were to stick with the same type of oil. Um, somebody can correct me on that if they want. But that's my opinion. So we'll go ahead and top this off and uh, be right back. All right, next thing we're gonna work on is putting this air filter in. So we're gonna pop the seat off. And I thought this here was an air filter, but it's not. It's what the air filter goes on. So you put the air filter over this and then you stick it on. And I'm gonna do that now. Here's the uh, Honda number for that air filter. All right, there it is. This unscrews off of the back and then you put the filter over this direction and that's how it goes. Put this back on. Okay, that's it for the air filter. Let's move on to the spark plug now. Probably gonna have to pull this cover back off, that's okay. Okay, I don't have to pull it off. Your spark plug's right up in here. You can see the wire there. It's gonna be kind of a pain, but uh, here is the number for that spark plug. And oddly enough, it's an 18 millimeter. Um, never seen that, usually they're 16 or 19, so might be a Honda thing, but the other thing you want to do is make sure you check the gap here. Uh, these boxes can get dropped and whatever, and it'll it'll make that close and it won't work right. So just make sure you look at that before you put it onto your uh, piece of equipment. Look at every spark plug you ever do. All right, got that plug off. This is going to be... Kind of a pain. Now. Hey, I'm on it. I was wondering if I was going to have to take the tank off. Of course, I'm going backwards, so let's unthread it. There we go. Let's see what this looks like. I wonder how bad, how carboned up it is or how bad it looks. OK. 
Okay. Yeah, I'd say it's probably time. It's not terrible, but definitely time to do it. I'm guessing this, that could be an original plug, I don't know. This has 2,590 hours on it. I'm sorry, 2,590 miles. I think it's like 480 hours, I believe. All right, we'll get that put in and I think that's going to be, oh, we got the battery. That's right, we gotta put the battery in yet. Don't wanna forget about that. Easy starting. So as I was uh, doing all that work, the battery showed up. FedEx dropped it off, so let's go ahead and put it in. It's right underneath the seat here. We gotta take this cover that holds the seat. We gotta unbolt it and pull it up and then connect the battery into it. All right. When you're hooking up a battery, you always want to hook up the positive first. Make sure the negative's not touching. Seems counterintuitive, but the reason you do that because if you hook up the negative first and then you're tightening down the, the positive and you got a metal tool like this, you know, just say you got a ratchet and you're tightening it down. Well, the end of that ratchet could hit something metal and now because your negative's hooked up, you've shorted your battery out. And that's why you do that. There we go. Cool, and supposedly this battery is good to go right out of the box. No charging necessary. Let's make sure everything's where it should be. Put this cover back on. Oh, good. I need a magnet. I dropped the screw. Well, I can't find my magnet, but I got a little claw here. So let's see if I can get it with the claw. Got All right, guys, there you go. Got another toy on the farm. So got this for $200. The battery was 50, the tune-up kit was 50. So I'm into it for 300. I don't think you can go wrong with that. I mean, it's got some other issues. The brakes are not very good on it. I can take a look at those. Uh, a lot of your um, breather tubes, the little tiny ones on here are rotted off. It's not a big deal. I can order more and put those on. That'll be dirt cheap. Obviously, we've got some cracks. Not a big deal. I'm not worried about it. 300 bucks, right? So um, the only thing I might do is try to maybe get a, uh, a different carrying system for the back that mounts onto this rack. Um, I believe Titan Attachments has that. Um, but yeah, let's go for a ride.